Okay. Ruby time. Or more accurately, man-made corundum with the right chemicals in it that make it a ruby. It has the same hardness, the same uh, chemistry as a ruby. It looks like a ruby, smells like a ruby, feels like a ruby. It is a ruby, but it's made in the lab as opposed to by nature. It would take an absolute expert to tell you that it's not man-made and indeed because of the shortages of ruby lots of ruby jewelry is made using this material look it up and it's really really nice to use and generally uh, very very clear so in this episode we are going to cut the van sand star which is this here um, it should suit the size of stone I've used my uh, formulas to calculate the size of stone and it's slightly complex but nothing we can't manage I don't think and the other thing we're going to do uh, whilst we're doing that is uh, sterling gems have kindly uh, sent me this to try it out. It's a new uh, lap. Now, my understanding is that it's for the sort of fine cutting of uh, sapphires. Uh, ruby is the same material. Uh, so you shake the stone normally using a cutting disc and then you go on to the fine cutting using this new uh, lap of theirs. I can see that it's an extremely heavy lap. It's, it looks like a mix of steel and something else because very cleverly, if you look at it through a loop, you can see that there are very, very small uh, pits. I wouldn't call them pits, uh, but very, very small little indentations microscopic which obviously accept somehow the uh, diamond powder therefore enabling you to cut I mean it's just very very smooth and it's interesting to see because there's definitely more than one material here if you look at the edge you can see that it's embedded with something else so this will be interesting we'll see how we get on so I'm just getting the information that Sandon has sent me about it. Um, it's called the SHL, Sterling Hardened Lap, especially for polishing sapphires. It's going to last forever because it's very, very well constructed. And basically it says once you've completed on the 1200 uh, lap, then you can move on to this hardened lap. No need for water when polishing. I said, do you use oil? Uh, yes, you can. Um, it's prepared like the copper lap, but you do not put the scores going through it because obviously the way this is constructed holds the diamond powder. I think that's about all he's put on there. So we'll give it a go. But first of all, we'll start with preforming uh, our our ruby corundum. Right, so we've preformed our perfect square, which is what the plan calls for. Corundum is so hard that I have to start on the very noisy 100 diamond disc, and then down to the 260, and now I'm on the 500. Just making sure we're accurate and smooth. Now, corundum is probably about the only stone that you can safely use a hundred disc on. So if you don't use a hundred disc, you'll never get down. It will take forever, unless you've got patience, in which case it won't be a problem. Um, so, what we're going to do now is start on the pavilion facet. 
I'd better just go see what Mrs. Harris has planned for us today. Just to be on the safe side first. So, I'll go check out. Right, now we've got our lovely square. It's time to start. Sorry, that's Mrs. Morning, dear. Oh, morning, sorry. It's time to start the pavilion facet, and that's at 51.95. So, 51. check 51.95 and it's at 64 so what we're going to do is as usual uh, work out a central point and once we've got that central point we're going to facet to that central point oh, oh Mrs Harris has just turned up are you going yes of course I am I said the missus got real work to yeah I need more gems Enjoy yourself. Well, I'm the gem. Of course you are, my love. What other gems do you need? I can't answer that. <laughs> this is good material. How do I know? Because it's taken all morning just to get to this stage. Now we're almost, almost at the cubit point. I started off with a hundred uh, diamond disc uh, to really rough it out, but that was uh, having a detrimental effect on the gem. Uh, so I took it down to a 280, and then as I was getting close, down to a 500, because what you don't want is to have any sort of fractures or anything. But this is so such a hard material. Literally been at it for about two and a half, three hours. So I'm almost at that point where we've got a perfect Hewlett. Perfect. Right, phase one done. Pick of a job, bit of a challenge. Makes it all the more enjoyable, of course. So we now have a perfect start. We've got the first four pavilion facets in. We formed a perfect culet center point, and we've got the four uh, girdle facets. Now, of course, there are four more girdle facets to go in because of the shape of the stone, but I'm not going to form those until I've put some more pavilion facets in. But time for a coffee now. This has been a few hours, but a stone like this you just can't rush doesn't look a lot at the moment, but I'm sure it will do. Over now. Yeah, Mrs. Harris isn't talking about Saturday night, she's talking about the cat painting on her. Aren't you, my love? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean that. All right, yeah. okay. he loves you. So there we go. That is a few more of the facets put in. It's been a bit of a challenge because it didn't look very gem-like when it first started off, but it's looking good now. So I'll carry on with the next lot. So we're going to use this new disc. Again, this is an experiment. I haven't tried it out. But I talked about earlier, so I'll set that up and come back to you. So first thing I'm going to do is clean off this disc. I have prepared it. Ah, 
Sorry. Aha. Ooh, too much. Some old Crandon. As a matter of fact, it's exactly the same piece of Crandon that we're cutting. So let's start with a, rest, a less risky cut, because <clears throat> I don't know how this is going to perform. And we'll do the girdle. So I'm setting it at 90. And we don't need this anymore. with Sandon who makes this equipment uh, because he saw one of my uh, videos and I was putting uh, the uh, laps on top of the base lap. He said no you don't need to do that, it would be more accurate if you just started off on the, on the, on the base plate which is what we're doing. So I've got some adjustments going on now with uh, learning how to use this new disc from Sterling, this new lap rather, polishing lap designed for hard stones, with rubies and sapphires, I don't know how much you can see but the ones that I've done are coming up very nicely. I've got it now operating at about 1200 using multi purpose light oil and 5000 diamond dust, and it works beautifully on that. So, 40 doesn't take a lot. And bearing in mind, Sandon recommends that we go from a 1200 to this. I've gone from a 500 to this just to really give it a challenge. Oh, fantastic. That's all that needed. stone you can see the difference between the, the girdle and the 500 diamond cut pavilion. Does what it says on the tin. And this is a, a, a very 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 heavy uh, lap. Um, as I said it looks like it's made of some sort of steel or iron composite material. And it's got these, it doesn't need the scoring that a normal lap needs, uh, it just needs preparation uh, as I've done uh, because it's got natural little indents in it and that accepts the diamond powder and for a first go, well I'm hoping you can see that, it's amazing. Right, I'll carry on and start polishing the top end there. Mm. 
So we're working our way around using this new lap. And it is quick to say the least. So I suspect it's going to have good applications for uh, companies even who are cutting stones on an industrial basis. Um, for me it's just psh, job done as far as these small ones are concerned. So let's go to another delicate one of 44. So you, you can see the half chevrons that's left there. You can see what it takes to cut those in. <laughs> now you see it, now it's polished. And that's from a 500 grit. Diamond stone, it should have been from a 1200 if I was following Sandon's instructions, but let's give it a test, which we have done. To 14. Star date Sunday the second no yes the second of January two thousand and twenty two. I've gotta go back to work tomorrow. That is depressing. So today's the last day of freedom uh, before back to the grind. Yuck. Well never mind. I do enjoy my job. For anybody who's watching but you just enjoy time off as well so we're starting on the crown on this ruby and it's at 50.46 which I've set in on the protractor angle and it's index 64 which we've set there so this is going to get noisy because we're grinding away an awful lot to start off with so I'll start the process and then turn it off because you don't want to listen to all the noise and I'll show you the results once I've done the first four facets right first four in that takes off the big chunk of ruby uh, and that was on the 280 disc so now what I'm going to do is these edged facets here and because there's a lot less meat to take off uh, I've switched to the 500 disc and uh, the angle is 39.85 so 39.8 there we go Third row facet started, so we'll just carry on. And now I find the angle, also the height of the table. I can go at it with a bit more enthusiasm, knowing that when I feel it go light, I'm almost there. Uh, 
and there you go. See those two fresh facets gone in there. So I'll carry on with those. So we have the main crown facets in, the big ones. I'm now tempted to just polish this lot because it makes it far easier to do the final fine facets, which I will do, I think, on the new disc. We'll have a try anyway. So we're back on the sterling hardened lap that Sandon sent me to try out from uh, sterling in Sri Lanka. It's going to be, when it's launched, which I'm sure it will be shortly, lap will cost $150 US, which is far cheaper than most hardened laps like this. So I'm really putting it through its paces now um, because I have cut this stone uh, up to uh, 500 and it should be cut up to 1200 then go on to the sort of first polish which is what this is used for. So I'm going to really chuck it through its paces and use it having just cut this on a 500 lap and then we'll put some more diamond powder in and use it to not only polish but it it simply works um, and this new disc that Sandin sent I keep calling it the wrong name I better make sure I get that right Sterling Hardened Lap designed for hard stones rather like this ruby ball of course in Sri Lanka it's sapphires but just to show you it, it's a good product anyway I'm going to carry on using it just to finish this off You know the drill, please like, subscribe, share and ring the bell icon and I'll keep making these videos. Thank you.